Hi guys, so I know I haven't done one of these in a while, so I wanted to do a video, I was going to do a blog, but instead I'm going to do a video of my five pet peeves, and then tell you some things about me, and then read you an interesting devotional that I found today. Okay, so number one pet peeve um, is when people, you hold the door open for them, they don't say thank you. They just walk through the door, you know, like they're, you know, a celebrity or the queen. And then, you know, they don't even look at you. They don't say thank you. That's just rude to me because it's like, everybody watched Barney as a child. Most people did. So, Barney taught us please and thank you are the magic words. Like, it's c common sense. And it's not that hard to say. It's, it's two words. It's very simple, you know, and it just means that you appreciate what that person did. Because that person obviously didn't have to hold the door open for you, you know. But they do it out of kindness, and it's just a thanks. Like, it's so simple. Okay. So, n number two. When people cancel plans after you already made them. Um. Like, is one thing, like... If the plans aren't yet finalized, and then somebody like is like, "Oh, you know what? Um, somebody invited me to do this or that, and I'm gonna do that instead." So, hope that's okay. But when you buy the tickets, you talk about like you're definitely going, like everything's set, and then you cancel after the, the tickets are bought, and like. That's just like completely rude. So that's another one of my pet peeves. Number three, when you have to take classes you don't like in college. Like this semester, I have to take a religion class, and um, I actually I chose like to take this religion class on campus because the first one I took online, but this one I took on campus because I was like, you know what, I'll give on campus religion a try, and. Um, like, I chose it. It was marriage and family, and I thought, like, I was excited because I thought it was going to be about marriage, family, love, like, we were going to study those things. But, we're studying them in a religious context, so we have to study religious theology about it. And, like, as a child, I was raised Catholic, so I just, you know, I don't, I'm not a religious person. I don't believe in religion. I believe in that you have a relationship with Jesus, and you don't have to like. There's a difference between a relationship with God and Jesus, and a relation, and then religion. Religion is man-made rules to make yourself um, worthy for God, and then um, a relationship with Jesus involves nothing because He already died for you. He um, it involves nothing but you accepting that you believe that he died for your sins and all that and then you have to basically just live above what the world says is right you talk different you walk different you well w not walk in the literal sense of the word but walk different you walk a different path i guess you could say like you just live completely different like you don't like i'm not going to go into it because like this is not a video about morals, like, I'm not gonna talk about the difference between right and wrong, like, that's your own, like, you'll figure that out on your own, but there's just a difference between religion and having a relationship with God and through Christ. Like, there's just a difference. And then, secondly, about my religion class that I don't like is my teacher recently said the Bible is not evidence enough to support something being morally right or wrong. And in the context of what he was talking about, like, that's usually what people say, but to me that's like an ig that's such an ignorant thing for a professor to say. Because the Bible is the Word of God. And there's nothing more powerful than God. Basically, what it says is right is right. And what it says is wrong is wrong. Like, there's no... Uh, let's read between the lines and, like, think, oh, in that context, because it was the Old Testament, oh, it was, 
wrong in that time period, but it's not wrong today. Like, that's like saying, um, God, you're wrong. Like, everything you have established as, you know, creation and everything is wrong. Like, that's, like, questioning God, and that's, like, really being stupid, honestly. So, like, that bothers me completely. Number four, when professors take attendance. Professors in college, like, if I went to a public university, I'm pretty sure they don't take attendance because there's, like, 200-plus students. So it's like, I go to a private school, and this isn't high school, but they treat it like it is. Like, if I, I'm paying for the class, so if I don't want to show up, I don't see why I, I have to. Like, that's what I'm saying. I'm paying for it, so if I choose not to show up, I'm paying. Like, it's like a product. Like, it's the same as going to the store and buying a candy bar. If I don't want that candy bar, I'm not going to buy it. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's the same exchange. And that's why it makes me so mad when professors take attendance, because it is in high school. And then they use that attendance as a grade. Like, it's so ridiculous. And lastly, when people reject you or act like their opinion of you is the only one that explains your worth. Okay, so recently I've just been, like, in this dark, dark place. And I know that's like, you know, you'd be like, oh, you know, aren't you happy to be alive, blah, blah, blah. Well, of course. But recently people have just been very, like, unfriendly to me. And not all people just certain people, and I'm not going to, like, call them out, but, like, basically, some of my family, um, some of my friends that I thought were my friends, but they haven't been acting very friendly, um, my professors haven't been giving me grades that I don't think I deserve, and then that makes you feel, of course, that makes you feel worthless. My school is basically threatening to not let me come back next semester if I don't pay my bill when I have two semesters left until I graduate, like, I think that's just wrong. As a writer, like, I just, like, haven't been able to catch a break yet, and it's really disappointing. And, like, and then also a lot of people, like, I try to tell them about my books, and they just act like, you know, I'm just me. There's nothing special about that. It's like, oh, okay, thanks. Um, and then, lastly, by, um, employers, because recently I've been trying to get Christmas break employment, and I'm not really getting any good, like, you know, they're not like, oh, we'll give you a job, it's basically, be, basically because I have, like, no, I've never had another job besides working at the St. Leo Library, so, you know, basically my resume looks like, you know, some high school kid that's never had a job, but, like, it still doesn't mean I'm not a good employee, if they called up my employers at the library, they would see that I always show up, like, I really believe that I'm a good employee and I would do the same for a, like a real job than I would with my student job that I have at the library like so but um be feeling like that even though I felt like that then today I found a devotional that I'd like to read to you guys and then that's basically going to be it so I'm going to read this to you it's called chosen by God um, for we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God that he has chosen you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4. It is a wonderful thing to be chosen. Every kid who has ever stood in line during gym class waiting for the best athletes in the class to pick kids for their teams knows just how great it is to be chosen. Every budding young actor or musician who has tried out for the school player or the band knows what it's like to stand at the bulletin board anxiously scanning the names on the list posted there to see if they were chosen. And most of us, at one time or another, experienced the shame and pain that came when some vital selection was being made, and despite our waving hand and loud plea, pick me, pick me, we didn't make the cut. Most of us know what it's like to feel worthless and rejected as we watch others take the place we long to have. We know what it's like to wish we were somehow a little better and a little more worthy so that someday someone would choose me. That's why the greatest message you'll ever hear is the message of the gospel. It's the good news every one of us has been waiting for. Someone has chosen me. Not just someone, but Almighty God himself. The eternal creator, the most excellent, most awesome, most high God, picked us before the foundation of the world. He looked down through the ages and saw us at our very worst. He saw us fallen from glory and darkened with sin. Yet he loved us and said, I choose that one. 
No man asked God to do that. No man asked Jesus to go to the cross. Mankind didn't understand redemption's plan. It was a mystery hidden in God. It was God himself who desired to save us. He was the one who asked Jesus to shed his blood so we could be brought out of darkness and into the light of his eternal family. Let the enormity of that soak into your thinking. God chose you. He chose you before you knew him. He chose you before you were righteous. He chose you before you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. Remember the next time you're tempted to wave your hand in the air and say, Lord, please choose to heal me. Choose me for the blessing. Choose me for prosperity. Remember that he made his choice before the foundation of the world. He picked you to be born again. He picked you to be well. He picked you to be prosperous. He picked you to be a conqueror in every area of life. So stop pleading and start rejoicing. Give a shout of praise and say, thank God he has chosen me. So that's basically it. So if you ever feel rejected, remember that even if you're alone, God is with you and God loves you. Okay, until next time, lots of love. Bye.